Happy Saturday, two channel listening fans. Welcome back. I thank you for joining for another episode. I'm your host, Jason, and I review mostly used gear, secondhand gear that I've researched, and I believe that it's something I want to try, and I think it's worthwhile sharing with the public, especially those who are new to two channel listening, those beginners out there who find the daunting task of figuring out what's a good base level system that doesn't cost a whole lot of money, as well as other gear that's a little bit pricier that uh, may be of value for those, uh, those novices who have been in this hobby for a few years. So it's kind of how this, this channel started, was uh, wanting to dive do a deep dive on particular products that are less than ten thousand dollars in most cases i don't think i've done any particular review of anything that was over had over a five thousand dollar price tag yet yet anywho if you were hearing some thumping in the background that's not because i'm playing music for you this is apartment life and I am beholden to the rest of my neighbors and figuring out when I can get these things uh, videotaped for you guys. Did I just say videotaped? Holy crap. Anywho, um, let's get on with it. What do I have for everybody this fine Saturday? Well, folks, I've got the base level, second from base level, Peach Tree Deco 125 Sky Model. Now, the second from the base level is the fact that the designation for Sky, it has the Wi-Fi module in this particular unit, whereas the Deco 125 Sans Sky is just their base level integrated amplifier, no Wi-Fi capability. So the Sky gives you, gives you the antenna and the Wi-Fi capability with the, uh, once you've downloaded the Muso app but we'll get to that in a moment. What do we have here? We have a, a true all-in-one integrated amplifier where you just, you add speakers to it. This is a 120 watt amplifier into eight ohms and Peachtree describes it as good to two ohms all the way up to 16 ohms. Now that's an interesting paper spec. Most amplifier manufacturers, unless it's some seriously low watt tube amplifier, they generally don't designate that they go up to 16 watts and perform fine with 16, I'm sorry, 16 ohm speakers. Um, which is why you will also see some Peachtree products with uh, a lot of the Zoo brands from a few years ago. But let's not get into that yet. So this package, you have a 10 inch wide face, it's three and a half inches tall, and it goes 15 inches deep. So this thing has the ice, uh, ice modules in them, the cla it's class D, that's why you can fit so much into this nice tidy little package. You have the a USB connection, you have optical speed F uh, coax connection or digital connection, you have the an actual moving magnet phono option with this integrated amplifier. It does have an auxiliary with a tape loop of all things. And this little button right here is for the, the Wi-Fi connection with through the Muso app. And not to go without mentioning, for those of you who like to use headphones, this has a standard headphone jack with it. And it's also a remote capable integrated amplifier. Let's take a look around back, shall we? Boy, I love these Amazon toys. You know, before this, I would have had to have stopped rolling, got up, got my greasy fingerprints all over this thing, and then have to wipe it off again, start the camera, but now, you know, instead of just baking cakes and putting on this display piece, I can do this with my amps and speakers. So, this nice tidy little rear end of this integrated amplifier you have you have your in your ac inlet you have a service usb port you have your regular standard uh b usb b port again you have your grounding for your phono your tape loop or auxiliary here's the little digital speedif input you have 
preamp out. So if you wanted to add a subwoofer or a more powerful amplifier, you could do that with this. It, I believe the preamp section, it's uh, dynamic range is uh, 105 dB, which is pretty decent for, for this little integrated. And then you have your nice five way uh, binding post. So very tidy rear end with the two, two and ten antennae. Did I say that right? Anyway. The package, the design language of the Peachtree products, I've always found to be very handsome and art deco, probably why they call this the deco line. And the fact remains is you have this really nice brushed aluminum faceplate and it is a um, piano black wood case. Now the deco line, at least this generation, you can only get it in black. The Nova line, you can get those in different colors. Uh, more recently, the very attractive versions are the Mocha Woods, uh, almost looks like a zebra wood, but the Nova line will give you different options as far as the case goes. But for this little deco, black is what it is, and it's, it's handsome and it loves your fingerprints, I tell you what. I would also be remiss if I did not say that this is actually the fourth peach tree product that I have owned in my journey. I originally had the separates, the Nova Pre with the 220 amplifier, and I will always remember those two units as products that punched way above their price point. And this is back when peach tree was also using the tube um, buffer stages. And then as little as three years ago, I also had their first foray into the big boy components where they had the full size Grand Prix. So I had the Grand Prix amp and then they had the Grand Prix X, which was also their all in one integrated um, full size aluminum brushed case. Very good looking product. Uh, very well built, had class A preamp in it, as well as two tubes in the buffer stage. Now, speaking of the tubes and the little window that came with those older products, this is the latest generation from Peachtree, and what you will see that is missing is the window. Now, with most products and their generational changes, and as they advance with the Wi-Fi modules, the DAC modules, and even the amplification, so BNO has also modified and they have newer generations of their ICE amps, which is what's used in here. And that's really respectable where the other products were in the low 90s and even once you engage the tube buffer, it would drop down to 88 dB. There's just complication and I applaud Peachtree for going this route of eliminating that tube buffer. I never used it with those other products. I always found that I could immediately hear a shrinking of the of the um, the sound stage, and it softened things up a little bit too much for me. Then there's just the there's just the extra power that you need to add to it. There's complexity with having a tube stage buffer, what it does to what it does to the amplifi amplification stages, and then just a obviously the extra cost. So by removing that, removing the complexity, you're able to lower the price of the product and it actually increases the overall performance. That's my opinion. And so I really applaud them for doing that. What you have at the end of the day is this is a $999 integrated amplifier that you just add speakers to it and some speaker cables. That's very impressive for what this is and let's talk about the functionality. So with the functionality of how I set this up, it's, it was very interesting. So first thing you wanna do once it's, it's all plugged in and you have your speaker cables on, is you hold down the Wi-Fi button for, for 30 seconds and you actually get audible instruction over the speakers. It was, it was a little bit trippy, not off-putting, but it, it was quite surprising to hear you know, a lady's voice going through my speakers talking about what the next stages are, downloading the Muso app, uh, connecting it to your Wi-Fi. You actually have to go all the way to where the Muso app goes direct to your, to your Wi-Fi network you have to plug in the password for the router. And, and again, I'll show some, some of the, the functionality with the, the, the uh, integrated amplifier. But it 
all in all, I think it was about a two minutes to set it up through the Wi-Fi networks. Once it's set up, the network will forget the Muso app and it just becomes basically a remote at that point. And then you have the third party services that you would use through the remote. So it's has its title cap capable tune in uh, Spotify. Again, if you if you click on Spotify, it will just direct you to use use the Spotify app on your cell phone. And once you've used the Spotify um, subscription service, that actually is direct connect to the amp itself. It does not relay to the cell phone and create any lag issues. It's all direct at that point. And so that was actually, it's, it's an impressive feature because that also removes complexity and it removes any of the lagging of having to send a signal back and forth. It just goes directly from your router to the amp itself. And I would also have to say that with Spotify, which I'm not, I don't regularly use that anymore, definitely there was a, a, a cleanliness to the signal and it, it was impressive for what it could do for Spotify going direct to the integrated amplifier. So I used that uh, for a time being and very respectable for those of you who only use Spotify or may only use Tidal, that would be about all you would need and you would have a very clean sounding amplifier, very highly functional and usable and you just basically pick what speakers that you want to, to go with it. But I don't stop there. I have the Marantz uh, ND8006. So I unplugged my, my USB cable, put that in the back of it, and before I could even push the, the peach tree back into my rack, I was already instantaneously getting music from Amazon HD, which again surprised me as somebody who's had numerous USB DACs. You plug it in, you go back to your laptop, you have to manually select what, you know, what device do you wanna use. Usually there's a driver involved, you have to download the driver, go through all the steps, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and that can take several minutes to actually have a DAC up and running. Plugging this thing in and not even getting away from it before I started to get music, wow, this is a thousand dollar product. And just the simplicity of the setup, that impressed me quite a bit as well. So that worked, that worked um, very well. Here's the limitations though. So this being the Deco product, I could not find any information, not on Peachtree's website, not with any of the other reviewers. Uh, there is no information available on the particular DAC chip that is in this device, either through the Wi-Fi, the SPDIF, or the USB. All of them are completely limited to 24-bit 96K uh, PCM only digital analog conversion. There is no DSD and there is no capability up to 192. So this basically everything cuts off at 96, which is still, uh, you know, for, 99 out of 100 folks out there, very respectable sound quality to be had from any HD uh, tracks that you may have. And I have several from hdtracks.com or I also am now a major user of Amazon HD uh, subscription service. So just a caveat there, know that there's no information on the DAC chip, what's being used, where in all of the Nova line, you know loud and proud they, they have that picture of the Sabra ESS chips that they use in the, uh, the higher end integrated amplifiers. So that, you know, that was kind of interesting that I couldn't see that. And that definitely plays into when using the Wi-Fi or this as a standalone DAC. Once I plugged my Marantz back in and used that through the auxiliary, I was able to hear those differences. They were, it was very um, minute, the differences, but you know, certainly I will, I'll say later in the sound quality, I could hear it more in the bass than I could hear any, anywhere else throughout the listening. From a functionality standpoint, again, uh, that's very convenient to be able to just plug and play with this. Um, it's very clever, the design. So when using the remote or using the Muso app as a, as a remote for this device. 
since there is no digital meters and you can't really tell what's going on from the volume perspective, it, it does use its LED lighting function to tell you where you're at in the volume spectrum. And that also goes to the fact when you're trying to adjust for bass or for treble. So once you're clicking the volume, it uses the little blue LEDs across the line and they light up very bright and then go to the next one where it starts out dim to bright as you're clicking through clicking through the remote and turning the volume up. You can just use more fine incrementation with the volume knob itself. I would say there's one more catch when using the standalone remote or the Muso remote, or the app remote. This sucker can jump on you and I will say that was one thing that during the entire playback process I would should be to Peachtree a position where they could easily refine that. So when using the volume control, whatever the algorithm or the programming is, I would really wish Peachtree to refine that system. When you click the remote, and I mean, it doesn't seem like you're clicking it for more than a, a, a brief second, the volume would jump up quite a bit. And it was very difficult for me to find those exact stages where the listening was optimum in my space using the DB meter and keeping things again at my usual 85 or below. I had to literally hold the, hold the remote and just do a quick taps to get those fine incrementation adjustments uh, or you know more pain in the butt you could get up and just turn the dial and that would that would give you more control over how you know those jumps in the loudness scale. But nevertheless, from your seating position when hitting the volume control, the LEDs light up and it lets you know where you're at in the spectrum. And also, if you want to just go flat EQ, it has a button on the remote, which I'll show in the, the operational video. You hit that and all the, the little LEDs go white and then you know you're back to flat with the, the EQ position. So, you know, that's, that's a pretty clever use of the LED system that they have in this. And again, from a functionality standpoint and simplicity, minimalist design and minimalist in, in how you would use it, but you know, high, high watermark for you know, its price point in, in my particular opinion. Uh, again, there is no, there's no HD Amazon option through the Muso. It's not a third party service that's offered through this yet. So, you know, I did the majority of my listening through USB through my Lenovo laptop. One last piece on the, the functionality scale, uh, due to the limitations of either the, you know, the, the DAC itself or the type of Wi-Fi chip that they're using in it. So this is not, just so everybody knows, this is also not a full D DNLA uh, renderer. You only can use those third-party apps through the Muso app, and so this would not allow me to actually stream direct from my laptop using it as a, a library server. But since it is Apple compliant, this does allow you, if you have music on your Apple device or a tablet, you're able to go, uh, you're able to use the Sky Direct function, and that would allow you to stream music from your Apple um, tablet or from your Apple iPhone. So, you know, doesn't say anything about Android at this point. If it was compatible, I don't have an Android device, so I was not able to test for that particular functionality. But again, that's a necessary disclosure that this does not give you true um, control over any particular outboard servers if you have those, um, you know, or if you're using your laptop as, as a storage device for your music library like, like I do. From a, from a sound standpoint in the amplifier section of this unit, I usually like to pick one word for most of the products that I review. And one was easily discernible to me for this little unit. And how I, do, I would associate it or characterize this Deco 125 is incisive. The level of detail retrieval from this amp section of this little amplifier really 
surprised and wowed me at its price point. Now, I have to be, I have to be not judgmental, but I have to be objective. And it's important that you, the viewer, understand that I'm already at a spectrum with the type of speakers that I have that are already pretty much walking a fine line of being very obnoxious in a good way to where these are very revealing speakers. The raw tweeter in my Sierra, in my Sierra 2 EXs and the, the Dirty Weekends uh, fully loaded with the Clarity Caps. These two speakers are already very finely tuned for inner detail and emphasis in the mid and upper band regions. So I do not have a, what we'd say, a recessed or dark sounding speakers. Uh, I'm not a, a fan of those flatter, dark, recessed sounding speakers. So it was kind of an interesting mix or pairing with this particular amplifier with these speakers that are already finely tuned to what my per personal preferences are. Now with the Ascend Acoustic Sierra 2 EX, uh, incredible sound staging with this digital, with these, these Class D ICE amps, these latest, latest editions. And I can say uh, I benefit from having owned prior Peach Tree, Peach Tree products as well as several other types of Class D amplifiers least of which the super powerful Red Dragons that are also uh, Class D ASP-1000 modules inside of that from BNO. Now these are older generations from 2010. These I believe are from 2018 and um, the latest edition of, from, from uh, BNO and boy do they reflect whatever source material you are giving them and now I say that not as in wow this was this was too much of a good thing for me it was almost there with my speakers and the type of listening that I do it it was it definitely took a little bit of break in for the first two days uh, I definitely noticed that the amplifier changed over several hours and by day three I was really starting to understand what I was hearing, the sound signature that it was imparting on the two speakers that I have on hand and several times I would unplug them and go back and forth between them to see what was going on. By day five, never turning this off, it really settled down and I would say that it smoothed out uh, in a more pleasant in a more pleasant fashion to where I was comfortable going back to my DB meter and increasing everything to my normal uh, usual playback of 85 DB but I will say that that day one I was having to keep everything under 80 DB until things kind of flushed out it is again I go back to incisive because it, it was definitely it's detailed and really incredible again I say it retrieval of the the um, the inner material the there's a specific song that no matter how many times I've heard it and it's Melody Gardot's live in Europe and it's the March for Mingus there's there's a section where the bass player starts to go into his solo and he messes up and you hear there's there's a little bit of a, a mess up in what he's doing during the solo but this was the first time ever I actually heard him verbalize that he screwed up and he made the statement and I was I looked up at the speaker and going what and I had to play that back again because usually you just there's there's this little there's this little timeout quick timeout and then Melody she starts to laugh and then the song continues to go on, but I heard his voice for the first time, and that really surprised me that the cheapest amplifier that I've had in my system next to my little desktop Iowa fleshed that out. That was that was crazy interesting to me. 
And so, I, I again, I went through a lot of different genres. Uh, I went through a lot of movie scores. Excellent pairing with these particular speakers, the Sierra 2EXs. The depth of the sound stage was truly impressive with the movie scores, where more so than with my regular system, and even against my Unison Research, uh, my little Italian integrated that I like, it's a hybrid Italian with tube amp, with a, a tube section. That's usually a favorite for me, but I have to say, this gave more clarity. It was very clear, and it goes, and I go back to it being incisive and clear. This thing gets out of the way, and it just, it reveals what's ever in the source music that you're feeding it. And so, that also helped me uh, figure out the limitations of the DAC. So when I used the own, its own inboard DAC and listened to the same songs and then plugged in the Marantz, the other pleasant, pleasantly surprising piece to this is the grip on the bass. Incredibly deep bass and very uh, visceral. And again, for its price point, and being limited to, you know, I say limited to 120 watts with these little ice amp modules inside. The bass on the Zeus was seriously impressive. And it just, again, was very articulate in the, in the bass lines. I would have to say, when going back and forth with my system, the peach tree was clear, more defined, and gave me deeper bass than I was hearing with the Unison Research. Now, because this is subjective, and I'm not sitting here with these frequency charts and running all these different tests like some other folks do, from a subjective, from being completely subjective, with the Unison Research at 50 watts, it it focuses on the mid range, and with the tube, the 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 preamp tube section. It definitely gives a sweetness to that mid-range. With the peach tree amp section, uh, it's the first time I could say that there is an amp that was not only clear, but it didn't overlap or foreshadow, not foreshadow, but basically, usually there's a, a, a frequency spectrum to where it moves and shifts what you're hearing some are tipped up more towards the treble, some are tipped up more towards the mid-range, or, or some really focus on the lower registers at the expense of other parts of the frequency range. This peach tree seemed to somehow give you everything in the treble range that you think you should be hearing, everything in the mid-range, and it didn't shift or mask other parts of the frequency spectrum, at least with my listening. Now, the you know, it's not like it has off the chart um, dynamic range. While from a, a, a total harmonic distortion perspective, uh, from a spec at 0.03%, you know, that's not a very impressive spec when you think of other very high dynamic range amplifiers like one of the, the highest dynamic range amplifiers off the top of my head is the, the Benchmark ABH1 or AH1B. That has a, a range of 125 dB, and it's, you know, its total harmonic distortion is 0.0000 something, something, something. So that is, a, is one of the cleanest amplifiers that has been tested out there to my knowledge. And so when you think, okay, 0.03%, that's, that's somewhat high in, in, of a distortion level versus those other amps. I did not experience that there was a, a sharpness. I did not experience that there was unlistenability. Now, mind you, when you go too loud with this, when I would hit 90 dB peaks, I would have to turn it down and remind myself to keep an eye on the dB meter during my listening playback. But at the same time, there was so much detail and it was so articulate, I found myself several times turning it up a little bit more, getting lost in the music, 
and really wanting to hear these zoos just absolutely open up in my room. And it was kind of funny how I'd keep, I'd keep going back and forth and realizing that I'm pushing it too hard going up above 85 dB and I'd have to back it down. It was just, it was, it was, I wanted to find out what more parts of my usual music have I been missing something that might have been masked in the frequency spectrum. I would just like to, I would just like to emphasize for, for my viewers that, you know, with all the different amplifiers that I've experienced, there's there's more than just total harmonic distortion. You have intermodule distortion, and there's there's also other frame rail distortion. There's there is you know it's complicated making an amplifier section that does not play to different harmonics, be it even order harmonics or odd order harmonics. With this particular amplifier. I have to say that, again, it's rare that it didn't highlight or downplay any specific fre frequency region. Most amplifiers highlight something. Even the best amplifiers highlight some frequency range in the spectrum, and you tend to focus on whatever that highlight is. I sat back and I go, wow, the bass is incredibly strong, it's incredibly tight, incredibly articulate, but then I'm also going, wow, the voices are incredibly clear, and then yet again I'm going, wow, I'm also hearing incredible transients, the leading edge details and the decay, they're also all there. What is going on with this amplifier section that it is able to do all that and yet, it's 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 interesting because this, the the flip side to that is, it's impossible for us as listeners to our music, our favorite music. Rarely do we sit there and go, "Oh, that was missing. Oh, this was missing. I didn't hear that." Those are usually the cues that we're we're looking for when we go through our favorite songs. Oh, this wasn't as loud in this particular section as I was expecting, or her voice wasn't articulate, or I couldn't understand the lyrics on that particular track. And for me, this amplifier is saying, this is the downstream of everything that was recorded in the studio. You're getting whatever music that you put in. If it's really lousy and it was part of the loudness wars, you're gonna get you're gonna get some very sharp music. But if you got a very well very well recorded album you are getting everything you could possibly get out of that this thing wrenched everything out of my favorite tracks more than I ever expected and you know I hate to come back to you every single week and say wow Ascend Acoustic Sierra wow Zoo Audio this wow now Peachtree instead of you know rarely do I come and say I didn't like that. I'm not even, you know, one time have I said, there's a product I've had in this apartment. I refuse to review it because I did not like it. And that was that older Marantz integrated amplifier. This peach, tree, this peach tree wowed me at every single level, including even the limitations of its DAC. It sounds impressive. Again, please understand that I have very revealing speakers. So, you know, that's what I'm also getting. If I had some different reticent speakers, I don't know if that would change my mind about this versus my other standby favorite, which is my Unison Research Unico P hybrid integrated amplifier. But that particular amplifier with its stage two up rates, that's over $2,500 and it has no DAC section. Again, $999 with a DAC section, USB DAC, and Wi-Fi DAC. Guys, this is an impressive package. And since I buy things secondhand, let me say this. I picked this up for $625 delivered from Audiogon. How many times have you heard me that in that $600 budget region of, of where I look for certain products, Here's another one of those amazing $600 secondhand products that just I can't say enough about. So, I've given you the scorecard. I've shown you I've shown you the the video operation of this. 
and I can't highly recommend this particular peach tree enough to you guys. So much so that here I go again. I'm impressed by base level products. When, when you go to a manufacturer, and yes, they have their top shelf items, I'm usually more interested in what they're doing with their base level products. How much are you extracting from a base level product? What kind of value are you getting from their entry level products? And so with Peachtree and the Deco 125, I actually reached out to the music room in Broomfield, Colorado, and was able to negotiate for a brand new unit at $1,250. And so I bought a Novo 150 integrated amplifier from the music room for $1,250. And thank you, thank you very much to uh, Ben over there at the music room, their director of sales, I believe. So I'm commit, I'm committed to products that I think have have value, and that's where I will move up in the line with their with those brands to see. Okay, this is what you've accomplished for a thousand dollars. Now show me what their sixteen hundred dollar integrated amplifier is albeit I was able to buy it at a discount. So that will, hopefully I'll get that in the next few weeks. When you go to Peachtree's website, everything says it's pretty much out of stock. They had to order it from their distributor. I do not have a, um, I do not have the tracking number for that yet. So it's not even on its way to me. Don't know what the backlog is gonna be on that. And then as you guys also know that I posted uh, last week, I will be probably three months out before I will receive the Tecton Aruz that uh, I also ordered with all of the upgrades. And that is based on the lore with, again, a ribbon tweeter design. So thank you for tuning in, everybody. I appreciate those of you who, who chime in, who post, and are excited to see what, what uh, I'm able to come up with week in and week out as well as the polls that I put out during midweek. Thank you for, you know, thank you for being involved with that and having dialogue with me. I appreciate, you know, I appreciate the audio community very much. Deco 125 Sky, it's a great product. Can't recommend it enough, especially if you can find it on the secondhand market for, you know, at any, at any dollar really, because at a thousand bucks to start from, it, it easily embarrasses the $10,000 five box setup that I have uh, sitting in my rack behind me. So that's about as much as I could say about it. Y'all have a very wonderful weekend. Spring should be around the corner, although there's still more snow in, in Idaho today is this Saturday. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Be kind. gotta be kidding me oh Jesus I can't win